Hey beautiful people, welcome back to GMZ fam. And today I have for you another reaction video. I have the 10 biggest lies about Islam. And this was brought upon by a former video about a testimony of a Muslim man then turning Christian. And a lot of the Muslim community was telling me that the, there were a lot of lies and misconceptions in that testimony that weren't true to Islam. So I thought I'd make a video about 10 biggest lies about Islam or uh, debunking myths about Islam and just bringing it up to people's awareness. But yeah, without further ado, let's get it right into the video. We have heavily been exploring the religion of Islam here in FTD Facts. And over time, we have found a collection of misconceptions and myths and some straight up lies about Islam. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at 10 of the biggest lies about the religion of Islam. Mm. Welcome back to FTD Facts, guys. My name is Leroy Kenton. We got a very interesting episode coming right up. So make sure you watch from 10 all the way down to 1 because I don't want you to miss any of the information that we're going to be sharing in this episode. The first lie is Muslims worship a moon god. So some non-Muslims mistakenly believe that Allah is an Arab god or a moon god or some type of idol. However, Allah is in the Arabic language a proper name for God and Arabic speaking Christians also use the name Allah for God. Now one of the main factors of this belief is because one of the first uses of the crescent moon came from the second century BC where it represented the ancient Mesopotamian moon god Nana. And now today the crescent moon is associated with Islam. So many non-Muslims say, well, look, you worship the moon god. There's even a moon in the symbol of your religion. Next up at number nine, most Muslims are Arabs. Okay, so Islam is often associated with Arab people. But did you know that Arabs make up only 15% of all? I don't feel like any religion should be associated with any type of like ethnicity or like or race or, or anybody. Religion is religion. Put it, put it to the side. Anyone, white, black, Hispanic, doesn't matter. Eastern, like, like Eastern, Western, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't think any any religion should be associated with any society because anyone can pick up the book and decide to believe or not believe. Either way. Muslims. The country with the largest Muslim population is actually Indonesia, and large numbers of Muslims are also found in Asia, Africa, Europe, as well as other parts of the world. Muslims are encouraged to learn Arabic because they believe that the only language that you can really get the full extent of the Quran is in Arabic. Islam oppresses women. Practices like forced marriage, spousal abuse are actually things that contradict Islamic law. That that this one bothers me. This one bothers me a little bit because it's just like, how are you gonna depict the whole religion with the oppression and abuse of women? I, I again, I'm speaking from a perspective of someone who hasn't read the Quran and doesn't know much about Islam. But it's just like, just to flat out paint like, or uh, Islam as oppressors of women, it, it's kind of stereotypical and it's a it's a bit aggressive. And you know, I can see how a lot of people get offended by this and. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a bit far-fetched because there's a lot of uh, cases of men or quote-unquote societies oppressing women and they don't always have to do with religion. Law and most of the bad treatment towards women actually come from people's own evil natures and their own cultures and their belief and it's completely separate from the faith of Islam itself. Muslims are extremists. Now this is a big one. Many Muslim leaders and scholars frequently speak out against all forms of extremism and they offer different explanations and interpretations of Muslim teachings that have been twisted by others to promote extremism. Muslims believe the entire there are extremists in, in religion, outside of religion, and in different different parts of society. So to label, like, as a whole, just labeling things as extremists, it's like me saying it's just like every every cop is a crooked cop. That's not necessarily true. And, you know, exceptions don't disprove the rule. So it's just like if I say cops are good and there's a few bad cops, it's not going to disprove that cops are still good, you know? So it's just like don't 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 take the select few and the negative from the minority and apply it to the majority. Entire Quran taken as a complete text gives a message of hope as well as peace and faith and good virtues and any form of extremism cannot be justified under proper interpretation of the Islamic faith. Oh boy. 
Islam is intolerant of other faiths. Muslims mm. are constantly reminded that they are not the only ones who worship God. Specifically, Jews and Christians are called the people of the book in the Quran, meaning that those are people who also received previous revelations from God and are also can be seen as true worshipers of God. Also in Surah 2 verses 256 in the Quran, it says there is no compulsion in religion. And this is interpreted to mean that you cannot force any want to become a Muslim, you still got to respect other people's beliefs. Halfway mm. in at number five, jihad means holy war. So jihad in Arabic does not mean holy war. It actually means to strive or to struggle or to persevere. And jihad can be something that's done personally or can also involve a community. So in effect, jihad really means to become closer to God. And this type of struggle, jihad, is to ensure that a peaceful and equitable community still continues to exist. Of course, self-defense is acceptable to protect yourself and your community from any sort of like dangers. However, any form of offensive aggression is prohibited in Islam. All right, number four, Islamic prayer doesn't really have any meaning. Most people now know that Muslims are to pray five times a day. And now in right. Islam, there are several benefits to and that's something I, I've I've really liked because I'm I'm currently studying. I'm, I'm a theist. I used to be an atheist turned agnostic, not theist. But um, I'm currently uh, studying Christianity. And, and next, I, I plan to move on to Islam. But the, one of the things that's so attractive about Islam is that they pray five times a day. And the fact that it's just like they show that type of devotion to God. And um, it's definitely something that I find super interesting, for sure. The prayer. The daily prayers help keep Muslims' minds on God, and it helps Muslims to remember the Quran because they recite passages of the Quran, as well as it's a time to go before God to express thanks, to ask for forgiveness, to look for guidance in your life. So there's a whole lot of meaning for Muslims when it comes to prayer. All right, number three, Jesus is completely irrelevant in Islam. That's actually not true. Je that one I knew. That, that It's funny because it's the biggest focal point and it's the biggest like point between all three of the major uh, Abra Abrahamic religions. And it's just like Jesus is very much that point. It's just like the difference is basically Jesus because the Jews don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Some Jews don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Christianity thinks and worship him as God and then Muslim think he was a great prophet, but not God It's funny how it's just like this one thing is actually so huge and so big and it's the difference between each of these major religions Jesus, however, is revered as a prophet and the Messiah in Islam. The Islamic faith believes that Jesus will return as a Messiah and defeat the Antichrist. This view is also very similar to the Christian view. The only yep. difference is that Muslims don't view Jesus as the son of God. Yep. He's just seen as a prophet when you compare it to the Christian faith. All right, guys, we got two more left. So the crescent moon is a universal symbol of Islam. It's actually, yeah, it's not. Okay, so the early Muslim community did not really have any sort of symbols or anything. Now the crescent moon, as well as the star symbol, they actually predate Islam by several thousands of years. And as a matter of fact, they weren't affiliated with Islam at all until the Ottoman Empire placed it on their flag. And over time, the symbol became more associated with Islam, but it's not actually their official symbol. That just doesn't exist. And the number one biggest lie, myth, misconception, about Islam is that Muhammad is the founder of Islam and Muslims worship him. Muslims believe that Muhammad was God's final prophet and communicated God's final revelation to humanity. Muslims consider Adam, the first man created, to actually be the first Muslim because he was, of course, surrendered to the will of God, and that's what the term Muslim means, one who surrenders to the will of God. Muhammad is held in great esteem, but he's not to be worshipped because worship is only meant to be directed towards God, and it's completely forbidden to worship anyone or anything else. Muslims may, however, celebrate Muhammad's birthday, similar to the way that Americans celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. All right, guys, that's all I have. Wow, that was good because that was the one that was one of the ones I definitely didn't know. But that's super interesting to just like look at because like I do plan to move on to the Quran and Islam next. So it's just like this is kind of like a precursor. It's like I'm I'm finishing the Old Testament and then moving on to the New Testament and eventually getting through that to come to this. And it's just like it's nice to see these type of videos and like get a different like fresh set of eyes and perspectives of somebody else's like worldview. So, yeah, I think this was good.
for you in this episode this was your brief look at 10 misconceptions myths and lies about islam let me know your thoughts and comments down below about anything that i mentioned in this episode and also what other lies do you know about it'll be interesting to see what you guys comment below and don't forget guys i take requests on ftd facts so if you have any suggestions for future videos also put those below as well and i'm gonna piggyback right off of that ladies and gentlemen i hope you guys enjoyed this video um, if you did like it, drop a like down below, hit a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.